We know there are things wrong with America's foreign policy. For starters, it's lacking in realism. I'm William Ruger. I'm a political scientist, a Navy Reserve officer who served in Afghanistan, and I'm a realist. I'm an advocate for a foreign policy based on both realism and restraint. But let's start with realism. What do we mean by realism? Realism starts with understanding the world as it is, not as we would idealistically like it to be. It means acknowledging certain basic facts about the world and the constraints in the international system. It's hard to project power across national boundaries because the enemy gets a vote when you try. Water, especially oceans, provides security, and the U.S. is secure behind two oceans with weak, friendly neighbors. Nuclear weapons have changed security considerations significantly. What are the real threats as opposed to those inflated, often by self-interested actors? Because there are real threats. The international system isn't beanbag. A policy based in realism recognizes that the international system is characterized by anarchy, where nation states have no higher authority to address disputes. There is no 911 to call. This leaves states responsible for their own security and survival. It's a self-help world, meaning each state has to solve problems for itself, sometimes on its own. That is why realists appreciate the need to maintain a strong national defense, avoid dependence on others, worry about the balance of power, and think strategically about how they engage the world. And because all states rationally do this and pursue their interest in survival, it creates security competition, including arms races, and can lead to war. The search for security can lead to what is called the security dilemma, where one state's rational attempt to grow its power or get security for itself makes another feel less secure. That second state may then take steps to protect its own self, but end up worrying the first state in the process. An action-reaction process can set in, leading all to feel, act, and be less secure. Think of a neighbor who starts suddenly patrolling his yard nightly with a shotgun and how the other neighbors might feel. Power matters, and the U.S. needs to have a strong national defense. In fact, having the ability to defend one's nation is paramount for any realist. Now, how we effectively execute that, I think naturally leads to the premise that for a country like the United States, restraint is the best approach. The United States can provide for a strong national defense in a manner that doesn't necessarily lead to security dilemmas, which can end up with unnecessary wars costing us blood and treasure. <laughs>